when I first started in the industry, I was on the front lines of support at NoFell. Mm -hmm. And I can still remember, you know, someone calling in and, and needing some help. And I told them they had to add a megabyte of RAM to their server. And they, they couldn't believe it. It was $1,000 to mm -hmm. add a megabyte. It's lunchtime, and this is Brad Anderson's Lunch Break. A lot of really smart people visit us here in Redmond. And in between their meetings, I try to find a time for us to grab lunch. When you're adopting early technology like that, how do you balance risk and reward? Um, it comes down to expectation and also uh, setting up uh, the user for success. Um, as an organization, New Lemon really likes self-service. Yeah. Uh, so we're really into uh, providing users with uh, training materials that they need, communicating when changes are made. For 365 migration, that was a long process. Um, and it took us about um, three weeks to migrate the, complete, uh, the, the whole company <laughs> over. Um, three weeks isn't a lot of time in a lot of companies. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. It's really our users, right? They are so adaptable to change because they have such open minds. Yeah. And if it weren't for them, I think it could take way longer. I think it's another, another important lesson that you just taught us, which is expectations mm -hmm. and make sure your users are aware of, of what you're doing and the benefit that they're going to get. I love it. Well, we got a name check at the CIO Summit. We were officially declared the biggest OneDrive in the world. Okay, wow. So I was pleased with that. Uh, and it's working. Uh, 500 terabytes, half a petabyte now in OneDrive. And wow. we've, we're nowhere near finished. And you know, we're, we're kind of like neck and neck between Microsoft and Accenture for who has the largest Windows 10 estate in the world right now as well. Well, we're gonna soon change that. It is my absolute ambition to ensure that we are larger in Windows 10 installations All than right, so you guys here in Microsoft. The very fact though that we can gamify it to an extent and the very fact that we can deploy it and we can deploy it at more than 20,000 a month shows that it's enterprise ready, yep. it's fit for purpose, it works and people love it. It used to take us maybe three working days but maybe a couple of sessions to get a single sign-on application going. Recently we did an application three environments, dev, QA, prod, um, in 30 minutes. And it's caught on like wildfire because we have business groups coming to us now with their legacy applications oh. and go, how do I bring my legacy applications on here? And I'm scratching my head trying to figure out how to get that going. Being an early adopter, you know, obviously there's, there's risk and reward with that. And with some of those, there's gonna be some bumps in the road. Um, how do you deal with you know, bumps, with, with failures, and how do you lead through that in an organization that's just so big as yours? An organization that's so big, but also grew up on boilerplate, lockdown, gold-plated, but very late, because we used to iron out all the bugs, typically, before we would roll something out, which is why we were always on old releases. So, to your point, uh, we, we have to be honest, first of all, we are going to be the consumer of the new, and the new is not as stable. Let's not consume everything brand new across every, every service. Let's make some bets. Sure. Let's choose the services that do not end the universe if they wobble for a few minutes. Let's uh, celebrate the fact that we're having fun in the new and predict that there's going to be bumps and actively talk about them rather than be in denial. And that builds a, con a culture of consume and excite and adopt and it builds more tolerance into the user base. But do that with digital work capabilities, not the ERP. You talked about BYO and, and, and corporate devices. Mm -hmm. Do you think about how you manage them differently at all or do you, do you treat them the same? I treat them exactly the same. Um, only because my philosophy is BYO is the future. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't I don't treat them differently because at the end of the day, we are protecting identity, the data, and the device. I don't care if it's your device or my device, I'm still protecting it. You guys talk a lot about you know, being a productivity company and putting productivity and increasing the productivity of the individual and the uh, organization. But I add to that, you're also about creativity and innovation because I think your platforms are about productivity, creativity, and innovation. That's well said. 